I am actually going to take a step back, and typically when I do these talks, I don't talk about um, my project specifically. I like to talk about fun things like decentralized governance, scaling problems and solutions, the technology, and then I kind of weave in our project and what we're doing. Uh, but this time, since I'm actually speaking on a day of you know all other ICOs, I figured, hey, we might as well talk about our project specifically because I do think it's pretty cool, and I think we're doing some cool stuff that's. Uh, innovative, and I think we have some really good lessons learned over the last year, and maybe I can impart and share with you guys. Um, so first of all, I'll say, we're, we're not an ICO project. We, we launched a year ago, we're a fully operating blockchain, um, and we're having a, a lot of fun with it. We're growing uh, growing like weeds, and I think doing some cool stuff on the, the technology and the governance side that I'll share. Uh, so let's, let's do this, okay, cool. So I think every good project, um, you know, I, ICOs, are really nothing new except for democratizing fundraising. I th that really is, this whole ICO thing is a byproduct of the Satoshi revolution that came with Bitcoin. Uh, what it did was it gave us a great platform for which we can actually do crowd crowdfunding events, uh, but that's not really where we came from. So taking a step back, uh, our project is really working on infrastructure in the industry that I think is really important and related to what we're seeing right now. Um, so every good project has to start with a vision. It's not just a business plan, but I think a vision will take you much further than just a, a pure business plan. Um, so really, our, our broad vision that I don't often go out there and just broadcast to people, but I'll share with you here, is that we're trying to create an all-inclusive, peer-to-peer economic system. So our big utopian social good that we're trying to do is tear down borders and make the world you know, more fair for people. You know, level the playing field, give people all over the world access to the same types of opportunities. So this is where we start, and I think that this informs a, a lot of what we do, and it shapes our culture. So in a world of blockchain, where all these projects are posted on open source, you know, GitHub repositories, and you can copy, you can paste some code, and launch your own project, it's a clone of another one, I think we need to think about the differentiating factors. Like the old school business 101 was, if you're gonna invest in a project, what is that competitive mode that is gonna make this business valuable in the long term and you know, protect it from competition? So one of the things that I've learned in this industry is culture matters a lot. And our culture starts with our vision. And I think that this is a really good aspect of our project. That if you go and talk to our team, you know, we have a nice booth over here and I encourage you guys, if you like what you hear, come talk to us, we're, we're, we're a good crew. Uh, you'll see that the culture permeates in just everything that we do and the people that we bring on board. Now, let, let's go to the technology a little bit. So the vision that we have you know, goes beyond culture, it also goes to the technology. So I think that what we're doing is pushing the tech frontier in the industry. And if you guys are familiar with uh, some of the crypt cryptographic protocols out there, we build our technology on zero-knowledge cryptography. So this was a huge breakthrough that was brought to market in white, with a white paper in 2013 and commercialized in 2014. Uh, and we leverage this technology. It forms the kind of the cornerstone of what we're doing. And really what we're doing is we're taking this tech and building a platform on top of it. So you see some little icons here, so Google Play Store and Apple Store. This is what we're trying to do in the blockchain world. So we're laying the infrastructure so that businesses then can then go and build on top of our infrastructure and earn profits from doing so, participating in the ecosystem. Uh, we are doing this in a way that's different from other platforms out there. So you guys may have heard of Ethereum, you know, Cardano, or EOS. Uh, what we're doing is we're, we're not building all the scripting functions into a single protocol. We're actually doing containerized sidechains on special node, like a special node class. Uh, and we do this because security and you know, security is really important to us. And if you're going to load your protocol with a whole bunch of scripting functions, you're going to introduce a whole new set of kind of uh, a, a much larger threat surface. So that's kind of the, the tech foundations for what we're doing. We're, we have, just practically speaking, one of the largest node architectures already in the industry. We've been around for about a year, and we have as many nodes right now, give or take a bit, of Bitcoin, uh, which is pretty amazing. Uh, Ethereum still beats us out, but I think we're gonna jump past them pretty quickly. Uh, and we're experimenting in the social domain. <laughs> so we're, we're experimenting with, uh, you know, we have resources as a community. We're trying to experiment, experiment with like a 21st century version of a corporation. Like how do you fairly and efficiently allocate resources? Does it make sense to have a traditional corporate structure? I don't know, maybe. We're experimenting though. We're actually gonna introduce liquid democracy as a part of our uh, you know, fund, you know, a liquid democracy to determine how to you know, uh, allocate our resources. 
So that would be pretty interesting. That's something I'll talk about in a bit. And scaling is a really big problem for the infrastructure of our industry. So a lot of these ICOs will talk about specific business cases, but oftentimes they're building on top of infrastructure. So we're infrastructure guys, and we have to care about scalability. If we become massively successful, and we have tens of thousands of businesses building on top of our infrastructure, how are we going to sustain that? So these are the things that we're working on right now that I think will be of interest. Sorry for that. A little bit of a, a cold here traveling. Um, so yeah, I, I, our thing is security. Our thing is security. Privacy, security, we want to lay uh, a, a good foundation so that when users use our system, they can do, do so in a way with peace of mind. We don't want our users to have to worry about hackers getting in there, stealing their money, stealing their information. Uh, in the 21st century, we've realized that privacy is a really big deal. It's a really big deal, not just from a kind of a social perspective, but from an economic imperative as well. As you don't want to be one of these companies that you know next year will we'll have, you know, will be in the news of a multi-million user, a multi-hundred million user hack. So that's the kind of thing that we want to work against now with our you know, cryptographic standards. Um, in 2018, we're focusing hard on laying the groundwork so that in 2019 and beyond, we're a very useful protocol for people to build things on top of. So right now, our engineers are building useful apps on top of our system. Probably by the end of the year, we're looking to open that system up and be more accessible to other DApp developers. But for right now, we're taking a step at the most important applications on our platform. And we're doing some really interesting stuff on the R&D front. So what I found in this industry is you have a lot of projects that kind of start off with a core technology and they throw a product onto market. And they try to see how this product you know, is received by customers on the market. And I think that's great. We do that as well. But what I think we need is a little bit of a longer term perspective. And longer term perspective starts with R&D. You need to think three, five, ten years down the line, not just the next product cycle. Or, you know, uh, unfortunately, some people are just thinking about what's the price going to be next month, right? So you need to kind of balance the short term and the long term, which I think we're doing a pretty good job on. So, how are we doing that? Well, we have a whole new set of uh, things that we're doing to make our system more useful. Wallet products, uh, applications we're building on top of it. And we even have the first customer support unit 24-7 dedicated to our users, which is something really weird for a cryptocurrency platform to have. Uh, so we're the first to bring that to market. And now I'm happy to say we're being cloned on that from other projects that realize this is the right thing to do. I'm really proud to say, look at our team. So I think this is our biggest selling point, is we have a team of about 50 professionals, about half of them full-time, half of them part-time, uh, spread across seven divisions. So we're operating as a full-stack business in an industry that started with projects launched by, you know, a few, a few guys who script a little bit, clone a GitHub repo and launch a product. That's great, we did that as well, but we build out a really big team that's spread across functional areas. And I think that to be competitive now in this industry, this is the kind of structure that you need. You need a full stack business. <coughs> they could actually go out on uh, business development, marketing, operations, actually manage your financial portfolio. So these are the kinds of things that will give your organization competitive advantage in the long term. <coughs> so like I said, we're, we're focusing on infrastructure now. And for some of the basics of what we're doing, we're building a whole bunch of apps on top of our system that we think will add economic value. So, you could have a, a, a coin or a token to kind of trade back and forth, and that's kind of what we had in the early days of Bitcoin. You know, the cypherpunks out there, you know, we're just kind of trading around Bitcoin and very enthusiastic about it. But now we're realizing we have to actually have some economic utility on top of these networks if they're going to have value in the long run. So what we're doing is we're building these economic use cases. We realize, well, okay, let, let's use what we have for starters. What we have is a massive machine network. So we're starting by utilizing the processing power on this machine network, by building services that are competitive now with Amazon with rental computational power, an additional revenue stream into our system that allows you know, our node operators and our, our ecosystem members to actually earn additional revenue that comes outside of just the token economy. Uh, so we're trying to reach into the real economy and kind of blend out with the token economy and create what we hope will be the future real economy. <clears throat> So we're doing a whole bunch of stuff that will be familiar to guys in the crypto industry. Uh, distributed file storage systems, like a decentralized Dropbox. We think we'll add value and utilize the storage capacity of our systems. <clears throat> we're building chat, uh, chat um, applications that would be really good for people in parts of the world that may not have access to other types of messaging services. Uh, we're building 
uh, instant transaction you know, systems with our side chaining you know, platforms so that you don't have to wait 10 minutes for a transaction to confirm before you can actually use the money. Things like that that are kind of issues in this industry. We're trying to be proactive to solve. One really big issue that I see was I was involved with a, a merchant services company uh, a few years back where we were trying to bring cryptocurrency to the masses, to merchants. And I think we were years ahead of uh, real practi practical uh, use cases here. Because merchants who have their supply chain in say US dollars or British pounds or euro are not going to be uh, accepting cryptocurrency in mass. They're just not. Uh, that's wishful thinking because they have their entire supply chain in US dollars and fiat currency. They're not going to play the role of you know, currency dealer or currency trader. You know, they don't want that exchange rate risk. So we realize this now in the industry, the technology is here. We're creating uh, cryptographic versions of like the dollar. So with Zen, we're creating like a Zen dollar, which will actually be a price stable asset. We'll create a Zen euro, you know, Zen gold, Zen silver, and so on. So that <coughs> merchants can actually accept this without accepting exchange rate risk. <clears throat> so like I said, r and is really important. So we're thinking forward into the future, and we want to get ahead of some of the known issues in the industry. Uh, we know that this industry has governance issues. Uh, so governance is how you allocate resources. Governance is also how you decide you know, collectively to do a software upgrade or not. Uh, so we're working on this. We're actually doing some R&D with a partner, IOHK. This is the tech team behind Cardano, for instance. They have a really good team of scientists and engineers that we're leveraging to kind of bring an academic white paper for game theory into software code and launch that on our protocol. So we can have kind of an organic way of making decisions with our community. We're also thinking forward on scalability. You know, if we're going to be a payment system or be useful in, in, in uh, kind of a peer-to-peer -peer economy as a payment system, we have to be able to process a lot of transactions quickly and efficiently. So we're already starting that research and looking at what's called a directed acyclic graph technology, which is sort of a tree structure. It's kind of a, an evolution of blockchain technology, <coughs> which should allow us to do, if we do it successfully, a few thousand transactions per second, which puts us on par with like Visa on MasterCard in terms of processing capability. So, if you break uh, blockchain systems or these public blockchains into subsystems, you can start analyzing them, I think, a little bit more efficiently. So, for us, decentralization is really important because we want to be distributed global. Um, so, we, we actually tackle this as scientists and figure out what are the subsystems that we have to methodically decentralize. Uh, well, there's some good frameworks out there, like Logi from 21 Co. actually has a, a, a blockchain subsystem. Uh, kind of like map that we can put together with six subsystems, mining, client, software, developers, exchanges, nodes, ownership of the coin supply itself. Uh, so we try to decentralize all of these, but what we're layering in, which is a little innovative, is a, a new funding model to be sustainable long-term and a governance model. So one thing that, that I, you know, as a finance academic, I, I, it, it makes me you know, kind of cringe a little bit is if you as an organization or a startup were to raise a massive amount of capital up front, as a manager, I wouldn't know what to do with it. How would I time phase my budget over a five, 10, or 20 year period if I got all of the capital lump sum up front? Truly, that, that doesn't make sense. There's information asymmetries, there's agency issues, moral hazards associated with that. So what we do is we have an incremental funding model that sort of mimics the real world or the pre-blockchain world where you know, you, you had a good idea and you would go to a venture capital fund, you know, front fund, and you would say, hey, look at my minimum viable product, look at my early community, give me $2 million and I'll expand that. You know, and then if you do well, you get another fundraising round and so, so on. Uh, that's like our funding model, it's incremental over time, so that we know we'll actually have funding in 20 years, and it makes a little bit more sense because we actually spread the capital allocation out over time and know that it will actually be resourced into the future. <clears throat> And a really big thing for us, which I hope that we set an example in the industry, is that we care about our customers. Like our users are like valued customers that we respect. A real simple cultural uh, distinction from a lot of other projects in the industry that build technology uh, is kind of built by engineers for engineers without really an end user in mind. Now, of course, the industry is evolving and you're seeing much better products being put out there, but this is still a mindset that we want to get ahead of. If we want to be uh, the ridiculously friendly and uh, customer-oriented organization in the market. And I think we're already starting to build our niche here. So we're the first organization in this industry to put together a 24-7 customer support desk. Now for cryptocurrencies, it's globally distributed. This is kind of a big deal. Um, so we cover all time zones. <coughs> and 
out, we, we get back to our, our um, users within a 24-hour period with, with a smile. Right? So it's, it, it's, it's, a big, it's a big deal, and I think a big differentiating factor for us. So when you think, you know, well, why Zen in this case, or whenever you're evaluating a project, you think about the vision, you think about the team behind it, and you think about what they're trying to do, the technology, you think about the soft stuff like the brand and culture. Uh, I think we do a really good, really good job on all of this stuff. So if you guys have any questions, please stop by our booth out there, and you'll see our customer support in practice, and we'll have a smile on our faces. Thank you. Thank you.